David Villeman uh, taking the parade lap, checking out the last minute changes on the track as we take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's uh, 250 main event. So much on the line for this young man, David Villeman. $500,000 bonus, not counting the purse money, if he wins this, the third round of the Vans Triple Crown. It's come down to almost a Hollywood script, David Bailey. It's been unbelievable to think that this guy's been able to finish on the podium as many times as he has, grab all those wins against maybe the best field in 250 Supercross history. Here is our Honda starting lineup as it's Villeman and Wyndham, the two top qualifiers, LaRocco and McGrath. Don't rule out LaRocco in this race tonight. Now he is tough. You see how hot everyone is getting out there. And it's a physical battle. This main event with a little bit longer lap time and the temperatures here. The, it's a demanding track that requires great focus, and that's what he has. Down the stretch, LaRocco is very strong. And the remainder of our 20-rider field for the 250s. Almost every rider here could play a role in the third round of the Vans Triple Crown. And, of course, you've heard already from the pre-race interviews of Kevin Windham and Jeremy McGrath. They are not going to let this guy, even though he's a wonderful young man, take this $500,000 out of the country. That's just, you know, if I was in Villeman's shoes, I'd be like, come on, you guys, let me have it. Do you a little split. Yeah, right? they're just making it even harder now. But there's a look at McGrath getting ready to get lined up. Now, here's something I find interesting. Villeman last week, lined up all the way on the inside. Didn't get a good jump out of the gate, got closed off, McGrath was further to the outside, moved to the inside, bunched up the pack, Carmichael went down right in front of Villeman, he crashed, he actually didn't crash, but he was in last. Okay, that could happen again here, he's starting in the same place. Look at the stare of concentration on Villeman's face. And he's starting right next to Kevin Windham, who gets out of the gate like you wouldn't believe. So if Kevin can get out good, you can bet he's gonna make a left. He's not happy with Villeman's pass last week. I don't think there's anything wrong with the pass. It just caught Kevin by surprise. And he figured, hey, if I can use that as motivation to go out in Las Vegas and win the race, I will. A sold-out crowd in this expanded stadium to 38,856, the largest fan base in this stadium since they remodeled it to see the 250 Vans Triple Crown. The board is sideways. We're almost set to go. The main event from Las Vegas is underway. With them a good start. Bad jump for Villeman. Carmichael. McGrath right there. Windham and Tortelli come out of it side by side on the red Hondas with McGrath right behind him. And LaRocco a great start. Then Villeman is in fifth. That's not a bad position for Villeman. Not what he would like, but at least he's not mid-pack. That would be horrible and is far as he came through the pack last week from nearly last to second place, he knows all he needs to do is get close to contention and you have a chance to win this race. Wyndham gets the Yahoo.com whole shot $1,000. And it looks like he wants to take away with the race here. Well, he's got his teammate back there to ride block for a little while. It's, it's, a, it's got to be a little bit of a strategy. Honda would love to win this final race. Villeman rather for winning that 500 grand and try to beat McGrath as well. Yeah, but could Tortelli get back to the plans or be blocked out? <laughs> well, I don't know if oh, he care right now. Ryder going down. That's Mike Craig, number 43, front end washed out as soon as he threw it into that burn. The front end just didn't stick. Jeremy McGrath now starting to put some heat. Here's Villeman. He had to roll. He had to roll through that double. LaRocco has already talked about it. He doesn't really like Villeman that much. He's doing all he can to block him. You can see right now it's starting to frustrate. David, looks like he might be able to make a move, though. He's on the inside. Well, David Villeman uh, had six laps behind LaRocco before he finally got around him in Chicago to get up to second place. That was brilliant by LaRocco. Villeman had the pass made, had the inside. LaRocco just said, I'm going to blitz this outside. Got him back. Look at and that. He goes off the track. Villeman oh. goes off the track. No contact. He just stayed away from LaRocco. LaRocco didn't give him any room. I think David would have been a lot smarter to just play that safe and just let LaRocco have the line. Now it's cost him another position in Carmichael. Good luck getting by both these guys. So Villeman is in fifth position right now. Let's take another look at that very significant move. Well, Villeman had, met, had already made a pass. LaRocco got him back, and Villeman's trying to get him on the outside. LaRocco's saying no way. He doesn't really push him or any way, anything. It's just Villeman had too much speed going in, and before he couldn't do the double to get back over that tunnel and Carmichael got there. So Villeman now trying to take on Carmichael gets a little squirrely as he tries to extend himself a little bit past the limit. Kevin Windham is still our leader with Jeremy McGrath in second place, Tortelli now in third. 
tell you right now, every single rider in front of Villeman, all the guys have talked about, I would love to be the one that keeps him from getting that 500,000. I don't see, he's gonna, it's gonna take a miracle for me to buy all these guys and have a shot at winning this race, but I didn't think he'd come back to second last week either. You never know. So Wyndham continues to lead. Uh, McGrath, uh, though, he needs a win to uh, take away that $25,000 consolation prize in the band's triple crowd. Well, Wyndham's got about a two-second lead. He's stayed about the same last couple of laps. And what's happening right now amongst all these top riders, clear back to Villeman, this top six, they all run pretty much the same pace. The lap time's 110, 110, 111, 112. Beautiful move by Villeman to take Carmichael. Boy, that was a slick move to David Bailey. This guy, that's why they call him the Cobra. Man. He can strike anywhere or any time. He doesn't need the groove to make his pass. He can go anywhere. And get he creative. doesn't even pop up like a cobra. Let's take another look. Carmichael go into the outside. Villeman just comes right in there, catches him by surprise. I don't think Carmichael realized he was that close. Shouldn't have gone wide. He was trying to get back out of there and cover the inside, but it was too late. Villeman moves up to fifth place now. Mike Morocco was next on the list, and you know what happened the last time they started rubbing plastic. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if Villeman just parked him in the cheap seats. I mean, he's got to be irritated with the way LaRocco was blocking. I don't think it was any dirty riding on LaRocco's part, but he obviously was trying to make sure. Very difficult for Bill to make the pass. Here is our leader, Kevin Windham, by 2.5 seconds at last count. He's stretching it out a little bit. That last lap, a 109 by Windham. That's what he was turning in the heat races. He's getting better with time. Boy, would this be vindication after a very, very difficult season. He got two podiums in the first three races with David Bailey and then went into a punt. And it was tough to get out of. He's out of it now. And he just pulled away from Jeremy in that heat race. He's got to be thinking about that now. And he's got to wear a little bit on Jeremy as well. If Jeremy is, loses time again in the next lap and the one after that, he might start to feel like he's been beaten. There's Larry Brooks giving him a signal of sorts as McGrath goes by in second place. I did not expect Wyndham to dominate this much. But here comes stepping up the wick a bit, number one. McGrath square in that corner trying to shave off a little bit of race track. He's starting to lose contact with Kevin Wyndham. He comes up a little short right there, really has to use his body. Not just go right over the handlebars. Jumps that triple. No real mistakes that are costing him any time. Last lap through a 110. So he loses a little bit of time, but it's a 110.1, so he's still fairly consistent. The interval after the last lap is 3.2 seconds. As we check out now, Mike Morocco in fourth, and here comes Villeman number 934. What's going to happen this time when Villeman makes the jump? Oh, it's going to get ugly. <laughs> I have a feeling he's going to go in and make the ugliest block pass of the year. Wyndham thought that was a problem last week. Wait till Morocco gets a load of this. If he leaves the door open a little bit, Wyndham is going to wedge his way in there. Boy, look at the speed he takes into the corners. Watch the momentum he gets off this burn right here. He may be able to make a double pass right here. And that's Tortelli losing a position to LaRocco. And here comes Villeman trying to do the same. Trying to cut to the inside to take third away from Tortelli. Watch Villeman. He takes the outside through here. He'll have the inside in the next corner. Villeman using the strategy. He is out for LaRocco right now. He does not like that guy. LaRocco's moved up to third. Villeman is now in fourth. This is an impressive ride by Villeman. I mean, you can see in certain sections it pretty much is one line situation. And Villeman is still able to find ways around people. Watch him dive to the in Well, he's been diving to the inside right there. Most of the eyes focused on what David Villeman does. As Kevin Wyndham now has the 3.4 second lead on Jeremy McGrath. Villeman needs to get a run right here to this group section. He was so fast through there in practice. Gets a little crooked, but corrects it. He's able to sweep that corner a little bit better by going down the right side of the whoop section. Doesn't have any pressure, doesn't have to worry about anybody coming or any him. He's setting LaRocco up. He's thinking all the time. I guarantee LaRocco is worried about it. I don't know. He's got to get closer to LaRocco to beat him in those whoops, but he's got such nice moves in the court. LaRocco tripling into that corner right there. Villeman getting over ever so close now. 
looking for his opportunity to get the angle on Morocco as they go in the back, and this is where Morocco gave him the problem, and he went off the track earlier. Now he's got to be patient right here. It's only the sixth lap, 14 to go. Any time if he can get around Morocco and start clicking off the second a lap from the leaders. Not that far behind. Lap riders at the end. Guys get tired. Make mistakes. The track gets worse. It's possible. It looks a little like Chicago with Morocco being able to take in front of Villeneuve. Lap after lap. I thought it would take Villeneuve a lot longer to get around Carmichael and Tortelli, but I mean, they listen to me changing my tune. Art, I was saying I didn't think it would take a miracle for him to get back up there and have a shot at winning this race, but he's making a believer out of me right here. For third place. Number 934, David Hillman tries to get inside, just didn't quite, wasn't close enough to make the block pass as Morocco came out of the corner. Tried a little bit too hard right there to get tight. I thought he had a shot at getting down the straightaway and changing his line and cutting back to the inside, making a block pass. Be smart for the carry. Well, back there, he tried for a little bit too much, Art. You see, he lost all that time. Precious time. That's time where if LaRocco is to make a mistake while he has this cushion, he's not going to lose a position. Billman has got to stay close to have a chance to pass. Meanwhile, our leader, as we take a look at uh, there, is Kevin Windham, number 14. One victory, six podiums on the year. He's led 22 laps before this race. Two of those in Pontiac, the rest in Texas. And he has led every lap of this main event so far. So talking about having to work your way through the lap riders. He's got a five-second lead now with the grass on the grass. He's starting to feel the same thing he felt in the heat race, and he just does not have enough for winning tonight. He won't give up. He'll stay close. Five-second lead is nothing. And the laps that are remaining, still over halfway to go. McGrath have a little tough time right there, not able to use the line. Wants to lose a little bit of time there to Wyndham. It depends on the luck when you catch the lap riders. You catch them at the right place, you're able to work around no problem and not lose any time. McGrath got a little unlucky right there. He lost a fraction of a second, but that's all it really takes. Next is coming in the broadcast booth, uh, Steve Harwell, the lead singer for the uh, Smash Mouth group. Uh, hanging out with you guys. So oh, this is crazy. Jeremy yeah. McGrath in second place. Trying to make he's going to take it. Trying to catch up. He's 3.8 seconds mm -hmm. down. Now, he's going to take it. So he's picked it up. Yeah. I think it was a mistake by Kevin Windham out front. I didn't see Jeremy do anything special. Kevin made a little bit of a bobble. Possibly trying to get around a left rider, and Jeremy is closing in. We're still not at the halfway point. I'll tell you what's really starting to shape up is the fact that Morocco has picked up the pace so much in that battle with Villeman that they're not that far behind McGrath. This could be a 1-2-3-4 battle down the stretch. I think McGrath setting him up there now, just kind of laying back, letting him make mistakes. And here comes McGrath on the outside. Take another look at the mistake. Hung up with traffic, really, okay, and right Jason there. Thomas. And knocked two seconds off his lead, right there. Didn't see him really having to hesitate that much to get around Jason, but somewhere along the line he lost a few seconds to McGrath. He wasn't nervous before, and he's definitely got to be nervous now. McGrath and that big number one, all those wins, all that intimidation can rent every floor in your head. Kevin now isn't thinking about the track in front of him. He's got to be thinking about McGrath closing in. Steve, you got a favorite rider around here? Mm -hmm. uh, McGrath. Mm -hmm. Boy Wonder's going to catch him. So. <laughs> yeah, he seems to. Do you ride, Steve? A little bit, you know. Yeah. You know, my scooter. Which, uh, <laughs> it's by training wheels, you know. <laughs> I'm a little paranoid. This, this is like, this is like, this level we're here, like, you know, a little crazy level. I'd rather sing in the band than riding the bike. Mm -hmm. I don't know, sometimes it's pretty dangerous up there, too. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> but not like this. I see guys walking around with broken spleens and shoulders hanging out, and I'm like, okay, you guys can have this one. <laughs> Our leader right now is number 14, Kevin Wendell, but a challenge is underway by number one, the seven-time Supercross champion, Jeremy McGrath. The boy wonder. At one point, Villamy was 11 seconds down on the leader. Now it's only to eight. He's got McGrath and LaRocco between him. So I talked about this being possibly a four-way battle down the stretch. These guys are closing in on each other. But it's another great battle between Villeman and, uh, and Morocco shaping up. Check out the crowd. It's 
his pursuit of Kevin Wyndham. You see Morocco not far behind him. You're right, David. He came out of the shadows behind number one. We talk about it all the time that these were 25 or 30 lap main events. Morocco took off as many wins as he grabbed. He gets stronger. We're getting to that part of the race. DT Ten to go. Pavoli sees McGrath go by him. Jeremy continues to click off the lap riders going through the whoops now. Here's Villeman, number 934. Still trying to chase down Mike LaRocco. Look at the strength it takes to save that. A little loose there. Villeman, of course, coming from Europe, a little bit concerned about the heat. He's wearing a Bennett jersey right there. He's got short sleeves, trying to get some more circulation in there. When we start getting hot as the end of the race. We're approaching that part. Ten, nine to go now. These guys are tired. Do you hear me do right now? Yeah. He's close enough. Can you do it? Close enough. Okay. Hey, Dom, you got to look at the guy's record. <laughs> I know. Nine laps to go. And I'm like, uh, can he do it? I'm like, what do you think? Can he do it? He did it how many times now? Yeah, he's got 69 wins. Why not make it 70 here in Vegas? What's one more? What's one more? You guys got an appropriate song. All oh, stunning. Yeah. Well, well, because, you know, McGrath is in the show. He's riding bikes. He's the man everybody wants to beat and everybody wants to be, so, you know. Who inspired the song? Uh, actually, the song is just about, you know, the song is really about this kid. You know, I think everybody's an all-star inside, you know. Some kids get you know, you know, treated differently, but I think everybody's an all-star. You just got to find it inside yourself, so. I've got a song about Superman. I've never heard one of those. Well, that's coming next. That's okay. Next track. All right. I'll, I'll wait, wait for Jan. that. Steve Harwell, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Back to the racing time now as McGrath starts to inch back up. At the last lap, it was 2.37. Looks like it's closing within that now. And we got a 2.9 on the last interval. This is going to be a gut check for Kevin Wyndham. He is going to have to withstand the most pressure of the season. Dallas, his win there. McGrath went down the first lap. Not taking away the fact that Kevin was fast there. He was fast. He matched McGrath's pace. He beat him in the heat race as well. But here, he's got pressure. Scott McGrath back there, and that, that bothers him. You see that he's gaining a little bit here, a little bit there, and you see lap riders in front of you, you're starting to worry, going, I hope I can get through these guys, I hope I don't catch them in the wrong spot. You're thinking, if you start thinking too much, you start making mistakes. Kevin Windham trying. A two-time winner this season, that would be three years in a row, but can he hold off as he passes the reward? Gets around him, no problem. Up shifts right there. They come out of that corner, probably in second. Up shift to third. Uh-oh. What a great reaction right there. Boss just went sideways across the track right in front of Wyndham. He was able in the middle of that whoop section to make the correction and avoid the disaster. So a close call for Kevin Wyndham. We'll see if the same courtesy is given Jeremy McGrath as we take a look at the helmet cam. And Jeremy McGrath just went through the snow. Billman losing time now. I talked about at one point he was 12 seconds or 11 seconds back. He closed it to eight. Now he's 12 seconds back. So he, the heat here may be starting to get to him. He had to use so much energy making all those passes. I think he could be a little tired. His spirit may be a little bit broken. Jeremy McGrath looking for win number seven. Super crossover. Well, the fact that Jeremy doesn't ride all the outdoor races is pretty much it for Jeremy. He's, he's does not want to end his season with a second place. I always had the feeling, too, that, hey, they're going to forget about his seventh championship if no one wins the Triple Crown. That's all anybody's going to remember out of this season. Well, that's not going to happen now. It looks like with the positions, if they stay the way they are, Jeremy might pick up that consolation 25 grand. A win would make that a little bit better. Look how close he's getting now. Jeremy McGrath like a heat-seeking missile. On number 14. Shaved a second. You can see it, of course, but he shaved a second off of Wyndham's lead that time, and the crowd can sense that they have not sat down. Jeremy McGrath, who this year became Yamaha's all-time winningest rider. And a big mistake by Kevin Wyndham. Press him is the and look, dig deeper. <laughs> That's exactly Kevin's gonna have to reach down deep to be able to hold off McGrath right here. He cannot ride a defensive race. I guarantee you he's tight. He can't relax. He's got to just lead back. I mean, if he's able to hold him off, what a victory this would be for him and his head the rest of the season. Jeremy McGrath wants his 10th victory of the season in the last race here in Las Vegas. Jeremy McGrath won his very first 125 race here in Las Vegas. It was on a Kawasaki. Let's go down to Robbie. 
Well, I'm with Randy Lawrence, and you know what? That tire change might be the difference. Randy, that little tread pattern might be making all the difference right now. Well, I'm not sure if it's just that. He's riding a little bit better right now. Kevin's riding really good. We did change the tire. He's getting to the whoops a little bit better. He just uh, caught back up to Kevin, and uh, it's going to make an exciting race. We've got a few laps left, so uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a close one, guys. Five laps to go. And Wyndham and Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy McGrath gets the block pass on Wyndham. Can Wyndham come back now and make a good go of it? A lapper, Jeremy McGrath, hops the bank. Five laps, focus, Randy Lawrence says. He's yelling at him, the emotion in that mechanics area. I guarantee you, McGrath can't hear a thing going through there. He sees the sign. It doesn't matter. Randy wants this for his rider just as bad as Jeremy. These guys love to win. Rapid Grayson Goodman, he's just enjoying watching this race. His last ride, his best friend in the lead. Pulls a tearaway, clears the vision. That just messes with the head of the guys behind. You pull that tearaway and he's going, uh oh. He's confident. We've seen this before. Kevin's got to stay close and do the same back to Jeremy. Keep the pressure on. Very few people pressure Jeremy late in the race. Check the pass again, David Bailey, on Kevin well, Wyndham by just number one. Coming out of the finish line, Kevin knew it already. Saw him look over right there. He left us a little bit too much room. Jeremy had an easy move of it. Just the inside away. I thought Kevin over there was in the left side would have the inside at the end of that straightaway could maybe get him back that would have changed things quite a bit but he just didn't have enough so Jeremy McGrath now with one mission in mind and it's just take away from number 14 and he's starting to inch away just a little bit and the question is for Wyndham maybe uh, can he hold on a second you see that breathe focus yes you can I mean whatever they got to tell these guys and it's good advice for Jeremy right now by Randy saying breathe just like you've done a million times in the breathing part you're holding your breath sometimes out there you've got so much going on you're processing so much information reading the track shifting the clutch where you're going to pass the guy that sometimes holds your breath now that he's got that little cushion he can afford to relax breathe focus on the track do what he's done so many times before win number 70 if he hangs out the winningest rider here in las vegas in a very short period of time he has three wins five he should hold on. One was on a Honda. That was in 1994. And in the last two seasons, back to back on the Chaparral Yamaha. So many reasons for Jeremy to party. He gets a little out of shape there at the end of that whoop section here in Vegas. What a great place to cap the season. He won his seventh title. Looks like he's going to win the race. He's going to pick up the money. That's going to be a good party. David Zillman coming into this race looking for $500,000, saying oh, he's not going to bother his mind. But he just couldn't get around the very aggressive and talented Mike LaRocco. I'll tell you what, I remember yesterday after the practice session, we're sitting up here watching things, and we saw Jeremy out there walking the track again with the team manager, Larry Brooks, after the practice. I mean, just didn't you get the feeling that he just was very focused and he wasn't going to just rest and go, oh, I already got the title, I'll try, and if it's not coming to me, I'm not going to dig that deep. He does deep here. And it's the first time I really remember him coming back after practice, the first day of practice, and walking the track with no one there except uh, his team leader, Larry Brooks. Yeah, it's funny, too, talking with Brooks sometimes. Like, what do you guys talk about? Right there? He's like, oh, I mean, like, what are you going to tell Jeremy, you know? And he kind of laughed, and he goes, well, sometimes you look at a section, and Jeremy's been able to jump before, and Brooks is saying, yeah, you can do that. And he's going, I don't know. He's going, yeah, but you did it something just like this in St. Louis. And Jeremy goes, oh, yeah. It surprises me the things that Jeremy forgets out there. Those are the 14th win for Yamaha this season, their greatest season ever in Supercross. I'll tell you what's going on behind McGrath, though. See that? Number five is closed in on Wyndham. I was about to say I'm impressed with Wyndham, even though he got past. He's staying pretty close to Jeremy. And he has to. Which Look at is, Morocco. Yes. Morocco wants the second place. They're only three seconds up, just under four seconds down. So LaRocco has got an opportunity. Here's LaRocco making a bold move. He went to the outside this time. And Wyndham comes right back again. Peter Wyndham almost goes off the racetrack into the fence. Amsoil Honda of Mike LaRocco, the independent team, the highest points getter this season for a Honda rider. Two to go, and LaRocco is close enough that he can make a move on McGrath if McGrath relaxes a little too much. Would that be something 
Del Rocco, who has not won a race since 1995. He scored his very first 250 Supercross victory right here in Las Vegas. Back in 1991. Let's take a look at how LaRocco got around Wyndham. There was no room back there. They went out of the stadium. He goes around the outside. That's what Villeman was trying to, trying to do to him. Almost lock elbows right there. And Kevin was just kind of dogging around this inside right here, trying to protect it, but he drifted wide. LaRocco just cut back to the inside and handled it. LaRocco now trying to get by Matt Shue in the final lap as Jerry McGrath looks like he's got win number 70, 10 on the season. Pretty well wrapped up. He was able to pull out about a second and a half that last lap. He gained some time somewhere. LaRocco made a little mistake. At just under four seconds, grew to five and a half. There's our number one, Jeremy McGrath. We might see one more knack-knack before Jeremy takes his summer vacation. There it is. <laughs> McGrath in the crowd just loves it. This guy's amazing. I, I question where he gets his, his drive, his motivation to go out and win. He really doesn't have to. I don't know. The guy just loves to win. He's here to win. He doesn't really ever want to rest and ride out his cushion. We talked about that last week in Joliet. Here he's improving. If you count the 13 Supercross wins uh, in the 125 action, plus, uh, and the checkers for Jeremy. Win number 10 on the season, win number 70 of a career. And as you, if you count his 125 victories, he has reached the century mark in victories in AMA action. Well, I, you know, I mean, who's done that? I mean, Richard Petty, well, he's got 100 wins. They call him the king. I think it's fair to say that Jeremy got that status here at Supercross. And he sets the fireworks off. David Milliman does not get the $500,000. I do believe he will get, though, the $25,000 consolation prize. We'll have to check the points out. The highest points maker of the three Vans Triple Crown races would get the consolation prize. With McGrath winning and Villeman placing in fourth, I believe he has one more point. There's 934, David Villeman. He tried hard. He gave it everything he had. Didn't get the start he needed. He was close. I thought that may be close enough, but he had a tough time getting around LaRocco, made some mistakes, made up the time, but it took so much energy, he just ran out of steam down the stretch. All right, it would have been... You can see the frustration right there. He's mad. He is mad, disappointed. He wanted to win this. Kind of saved the fact that he didn't win the title. And just the opposite is Jeremy McGrath with Davey Coons. All right, Jeremy, the fireworks going out behind you. 70 career wins. You just shut the Frenchman out of $500,000. Well, you know, all the pressure was off me. It was on him. The monkey was on his back. He had to win. And uh, Kevin and I had a great fight. You know, it was awesome. I'd like to thank my team, Mazda Chaparral Yamaha, all the guys at Yamaha, Randy Lawrence, my parents, my girlfriend, my sister, everyone that's supported me through the whole year. This is my 11th win this year. Bridgestone tires, because we made a different call in the from the heat race, and I was swapping out all over the place and put a new tire on there. The thing was working great. Jeremy, congratulations. Seven titles, eight overall, all-time Supercross King. Thanks a lot, Davey. It's, it's a great, you know, who would have thought I'd be up here even for one? My dream was to race Supercross when I was little, and 70 wins later, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, David Milliman certainly did raise, rise himself to the occasion, though, at times throughout the season to motivate Jeremy McGrath toward 10 victories this year. Jeremy, as you see on the Honda results page, taking this one the final race of the season as we go down the 20 rider field. Mike LaRocco gave it, gave it a good show. Fireworks just not stopping here. What a show. What a better place to celebrate. And, uh, look at it. the showgirls there in the background. McGrath obviously happy. Wyndham has got to be happy with the way he rode. But still a little bit of disappointment there. Let's go to Robbie Floyd as the fireworks continue. Well, not a bad finish for Michael Arago here. Mike. What was going through your head when you saw Villeman trying to pass you on the outside? That was a pretty close call there for a moment. Yeah, actually, uh, he ended up running off the track, but uh, Jerry Bernardo painted my helmet this week, and uh, he said whoever gets in front of me and roosts me, I should take out. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it happened to be Villeman who was going for the, uh, you know, 500 grand. But, you know, he, he tried hard early, and then I think he, he saw it. It was a way, and uh, I just tried to get up as far as I could. Long way around on that outside. Now, what about towards the end also? Did you really think you were going to catch Wyndham with only a couple of laps left? 
Um, I saw he was on his way back, so I knew if McGrath got him that I had a real good chance because I was, I was pacing Jeremy. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to get him. That was my last goal. I didn't think I could catch Jeremy, and that's where I ended up. Well, guys, never give up. Back to you up in the booth. Let's check out the final point standings for the season 2000 for EA Sports Supercross. As you see here, McGrath finishes the season 35 points ahead of, ahead of Villeman. That is the slightest margin that McGrath has finished a winning season with. 48 was the previous slightest margin, so Villeman really did. He came to race, and he had a terrific rookie year. Let's go back down for the final thoughts now from Davey Coombs. Well, obviously, Jeremy McGrath just proved again for the 70th time why we like to call him the king of Supercross. There's a lot of pressure, of course, on Villeman. He comes out here. He's got one race going the season. He's got the title already wrapped up, but you know what? It doesn't matter. MC likes to win, and he goes out in 2000, another winner.